All right, so now we're moving over to the next laser. Ignore the uh, awesome magnetic coil for a little bit. This is another helium neon laser. It's a commercial laser, which is contained in a, uh, in a case that uh, is designed not to thermally expand or contract very much as the tube heats up. All of this from here is inside of this black tube. And again, I turn it on by turning this key and applying high voltage. After a few seconds, it'll turn on. And now we're not going to investigate the spatial modes because I have no control over that. There's some equivalent of an iris inside that's selecting the Gaussian mode. But we are going to investigate the modes in the longitudinal direction. So in order to get the lasing effect, there need to be an integer number of wavelengths uh, for the return trip between uh, this mirror going back, bouncing off the back mirror going forward. And for the wavelength of the helium neon laser, it's about 633 nanometers. That means that there are about a million wavelengths that make up that round trip path. And so we're going to look at the longitudinal modes of that laser. We'll see the laser isn't emitting at exactly one wavelength because the neon atoms are, are still active when, say, uh, a million wavelengths are present and also a million and one wavelengths and a million and two wavelengths, say. And we'll see that that's about as many modes fit in this cavity and still can be energized by the, the stimulated emission from the neon atoms. So there's, there's about three active modes in this cavity that are about a million wavelengths, a million and one, and about a million and two, something of that order. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a whole second cavity here. So. Uh, this, this is another version of laser cavity. It's shorter. It's about 10 centimeters. And there's just a hole here that lets the light in. And similarly, there's uh, quite a reflective uh, surface in the front and a quite reflective surface in the back. And as we'll learn in class, when these surfaces are spaced just right so that an integer number of round trips can fit in this cavity, and this cavity it'll be back and forth and back and forth. So when an integer number of wavelengths can fit in this cav cavity, um, a, uh, the, the light can build up in that cavity and the tiny reflectance on the back mirror will let, that, uh, will let a tiny fraction of that huge amount of light that's built up through. And it will hit a photo detector, which we will then look at uh, electrically on the oscilloscope. And the key to this cavity is there's a piezoelectric driver inside. And, and the piezoelectric crystal is one where when you apply a voltage, it can contract or expand ever so slightly. And part of this driver that we use uh, applies a ramp of voltage to make this cavity expand a, a few wavelengths of light and then come back and then expand again a few wavelengths of light and come back. And that will allow us to trace out when a wavelength happens to be resonant in the laser and it's actually producing light, and also that same wavelength is resonant in this cavity, we will see the signal on the photo detector. So let me turn on the drive. And on the oscilloscope, you can see the, the yellow voltage is the drive voltage. And you can even hear a little bit of the clicking. And so the, the cavity is, is ramping up, 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 and then it goes back and starts over. Ramp up, 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 and goes back and starts over. And the purple voltage is the, uh, the output of the amplified photodiode. And there are various parameters we can adjust. We can adjust the gain on the photodiode, so we can turn that gain down. We don't really see much in the way of signal. We can turn that gain up, so we see a lot of signal. We can adjust the timing, so I can have this take a very long time to go back. So this, this moves the cavity over the same range. It just takes, takes longer come back, or I can have that go faster, and, and you just hear that in, in clicking. And I would say we don't want it to go so fast that, uh, that the measurement we're getting is not accurate. So, so here on the screen, we're seeing three, three repeats of that. I can, uh, I can go even slower, so we just see one repeat of it. And let me move this over. 
So here the repeat rate is you know, something about a second. You can hear the clicking. Um, looks like the photodiode's not even turned on until about there in the cycle. But what we see here is we see three main peaks with some structure in between. And I'll talk about what both of those things are. So, so the three main peaks are as, so uh, imagine that the helium neon laser is spitting out light at uh, 633 nanometers. And as this cavity expands, and maybe there's not a million, but you know, let's, let's say 200,000. There's 200,000 modes in here. And as this cavity slowly expands, I get 200,000 modes, 200,000 one modes, 200,000 two modes, and, and then it resets and starts over. So each little uh, complicated peak here is where one more optical uh, wavelength is, is resonant in this cavity. And uh, let's examine the structure of the peaks themselves, because that will tell us something about the spectrum of the laser itself. So right now, we're looking at three, uh, sort of three repeats of the same thing as this cavity expands. But I can zoom in by changing the amount by which uh, I apply voltage to the piezoelectric device. So let me, let me do that here. Uh, so the yellow signal is just for triggering the oscilloscope. It's not really uh, proportional to the actual voltage. So I'm changing the ramp. I'm kind of zooming in on the center of the ramp. And in fact, uh, let me just get rid of the yellow line because that's not super useful to see. I've zoomed in. And what I'm seeing is I'm seeing three individual modes that are all moving. And you can see that they're sort of tracing out an envelope here. And that envelope is called the Doppler envelope of the, the emission spectrum of the neon atoms. If I just have a neon light and I zap it with electricity uh, and the neon emits at around this wavelength, there'll be a whole bunch of uh, atoms moving at different velocities and the wavelengths that they emit will, will trace out a profile that encompasses all of these peaks. Now, what the laser cavity does is it doesn't allow all of that light to be resonant. W within that envelope, only light that, that is also uh, happens to be an integer number uh, of wavelengths fitting in the cavity is resonant with the cavity. And that's what these three peaks are. And the fact that they're moving like this is because the cavity itself is slowly heating up. And if I leave it on for many, many hours, uh, it'll eventually stop somewhere and I'll see some particular number of, uh, of modes. And as the cavity slowly heats up, the modes that happen to overlap with that Doppler envelope are slowly changing. That's what we're seeing here. Let me uh, see if I can adjust this a little bit and get a different feature. So here I'm just sort of changing how the light comes into the cavity. If you look at one of these modes as it approaches maximum, it sort of takes a little dip and then comes back up. And there's a big dip. Yeah, there it is. And now it's coming back up. So here the next mode that's going to come in as, an, as, it, as it's approaching the peak of the Doppler envelope, what would be the peak? It actually takes a dip right around there, and now it's going to come back up. Uh, that dip is the LAM dip, and you will learn about that, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit in lecture. And the, the reason is basically the population of atoms that's right at the center is uh, the right at, right at the center of the of this Doppler envelope is a population of atoms that's not really moving, and so uh, compared to the atoms that are moving in one direction or the other direction, which can each happen to to resonate with the cavity, population of atoms right in the center is only about half 
half as big because uh, there's not a separate population of, of atoms moving in each direction. There's a little dip in the, in the center for the atoms that are not moving. All right, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, so there's a little bit of fuzziness and structure in the cavity as, there we go. As I wait longer and longer, these move slower and slower. There we go, boom, there's the lamb dip, and it's coming back. All right, all right, in the display menu here, I've chosen infinite persist, so that it never actually erases the, the purple trace. And let me, re, let me uh, clear this and recenter, oops, by the way, recenter, clear it again, and I'll let this go through its full cycle here. So you see in the background the, the purple constantly drawing, tracing out the Doppler envelope. So now there are two modes that can fit in the cavity of the laser. So now there are three modes that can fit in the cavity of the laser because they've shifted slightly. Three modes within the Doppler envelope. Okay, let's do the same thing, but be a little bit more quantitative. So the specifications for this cavity say that the free spectral range is eight gigahertz. And I'll, I'll talk about what that means a little bit more in class. But that means that the distance between one set of spikes from the piezoelectric drive and the next set of spikes from piezoelectric drive is a separation of eight gigahertz. And I've changed the oscilloscope to be in XY mode where that triangle ramp is now the X and the, uh, the vertical is, is uh, still the photodiode. And what I'm gonna do, uh, oh, and this XY mode has eight boxes, eight divisions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the timing of this so that the distance between one set of modes and the next is takes up all eight boxes. And that means that each box will be one gigahertz in separation. So let me, it's not quite good enough. Oops, wrong way. So as one mode disappears off the screen, it should start to appear on the other screen. So there, that's, that's about one, uh, one gigahertz per box. Now rather than adjusting it in continuously, I can adjust it in steps. So before I adjust in steps, let me center one of the sets of laser modes in the center of the screen here. And what I'll do now is I'll zoom in by a factor of two. So that's sweeping the piezoelectric device half as much. And a factor of five. And so now instead of each box corresponding to one gigahertz, since I've gone in by a factor of five, each box is a fifth of a gigahertz in separation. And now we can use this to measure separation modes. It looks like it's about two boxes, there we go, between these adjacent modes of the laser itself. And so that is two-fifths of a gigahertz, which you can translate into uh, the appropriate megahertz. And compare that with the separation we would calculate from the length of the laser cavity and, and see if that makes sense. All right, with the same settings as before, I'm gonna turn persist back on and we'll let it trace out the Doppler envelope. Uh, infinite persist, sure. And this will give us 
estimate of the width of the Doppler envelope. 